Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and build your wealth. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about five ETFs that you should buy and hold forever. Uh, so obviously forever is one of those clickbaity YouTube words that people get you to click on their videos and then they ramble aimlessly for eight to 10 minutes just so they can increase their ad revenue throughout the uh, video. Um, that may or may not be the case here. However, if you are a long-term investor in the equity markets, these are definitely five ETFs that you should definitely consider holding for years, if not decades if possible. Stay tuned. Coming in at number one is the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, ticker symbol VTI. If you're looking for one ETF to buy and hold forever, then this is almost a must have in your portfolio. With just one slice of this ETF, you get exposure to almost the entire stock market, roughly 3,900 companies or more uh, to be exact. So we're talking well-established companies like Microsoft and Apple, but not just the big dogs. We also have mid-cap and small-cap exposure as well. VTI boasts a whopping $260 billion of assets under management, which easily makes it one of the market's largest ETFs. Vanguard states that the purpose of this ETF is to monitor the CRSP, U.S. Total Stock Market Index Performance Fund, so it's not surprising that many of the biggest companies on the stock market are under VTI. Its largest holdings are currently Apple and Microsoft, uh, with weightings of 4.8% and 4.5%. Other companies joining Apple and Microsoft to make the top five positions of VTI, including Fang Giants Amazon, Alphabet, Facebook, and other holdings in VTI include Berkshire Hathaway, Tesla, NVIDIA, and JP Morgan Chase. Altogether, these holdings have a total weighting of roughly 22% of the fund. However, as mentioned earlier, one of the biggest reasons that VTI is appealing is the diversification that it provides. So companies in VTI, they represent a wide variety of market sectors, although the technology sector is the most represented at 32%, which you can see here. Uh, other sectors are consumer cyclical, healthcare, industrials, financials, consumer staples, and a bunch of other stuff that I'm sure you're familiar with. So buying into VTI is like buying into the entire stock market. This means that you will also experience every single one of the stock market's moves, the highs, the lows, everything. Uh, so for example, following the pandemic of 2020, the stock market crashed as did VTI. On March 20th of 2020, VTI was trading at $115 per share. Now it's sitting at $227. Uh, you must be able to handle the highs and the lows when having a 100% equity exposure. Uh, so to wrap this up, the ETF had a one-year return of 38.75% and a 10-year return of 15.52% with an extremely low expense ratio of just 0.03% and a decent dividend yield of 1.2%. So in conclusion, VTI is a good choice for investors or traders looking for comprehensive total market equity exposure, including the micro caps and the mid caps, not just the large caps. Next on our list is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF with the ticker symbol of VOO. This is a strong option if you wanna diversify risk while still having exposure to 500 of the largest companies in the US. So VOO is very popular with many investors and it has a reputation for being the index to beat for most active portfolio managers. So VOO tracks a market cap weighted index of US large and mid cap stocks selected by the S&P committee. So so as you probably already know, the S&P 500 represents the top 500 companies in the United States. So the aim of this ETF is to track the performance of the S&P 500 index, which is typically a good gauge of the entire U.S. stock returns. This ETF was created on September 7th, 2010, and just in about 10 years or so, a little over a decade, it has actually increased by 268%. So where has so much of this growth come from in such little time? Well, it's pretty simple. The fund has a roughly a third of its assets in the tech sector, and it's all the big guys too. So the, the big companies are carrying this. You have Apple at 5.89%, uh, you have Microsoft at 5.6%, you have Amazon at 4%, uh, Facebook at 2.3%, and Google at 2%. So it is somewhat tech heavy. Um, while the technology sector dominates the VOO fund, other sectors you'd find are healthcare, consumer discretionary, communication services, and financials. So this ETF has a one-year performance of 40.97% uh, at the time of this recording, and a 10-year performance of 14.89% at the time of this recording. Uh, it also has an extremely low expense ratio with Vanguard-esque style at 0.03% and a pretty healthy dividend yield of 1.24%. 
So in conclusion, VOO captures the large cap space well, and the fund tracks pretty much everything that the S&P committee sees fit. Uh, so it's a good fit for set it and forget it type of investors who wanna target this popular benchmark. Number three on our list is ticker symbol SCHD. Uh, Mr. Schwab, old Chucky, buddy. Uh, it's a great all-around ETF. It provides dividend growth, a high yield, and a lot of diversification. So really, what else could you possibly ask for? So not many funds can pull off these three benefits like SCHD does. Um, I personally hold SCHD in one of my dividend portfolios um, because it is a market cap weighted fund whose selection criteria only includes firms with a 10-year history of paying dividends. So within that universe or that selection criteria, uh, SCHD uses fundamental screens like cash flow, um, debt ratios, return on equity, dividend yield, and dividend growth rate to build out that portfolio. Um, so the objective of this portfolio is to focus on quality companies with sustainable dividends. So this approach gives the fund a modest large cap tilt and excludes REITs entirely. So there are no real estate investment trusts. Uh, individual securities are capped at 4% and sectors are capped at 25% of the overall portfolio. So overall, its composition is reviewed annually um, while the portfolio is rebalanced quarterly. So on top of that, the stocks must have a market cap of at least $500 million and an average daily trading volume of $2 million at least. So again, going back to that large cap tilt. So with this criteria in place, SCHD is doing very well. Uh, in fact, SCHD has managed to beat the S&P 500 by a significant margin over the past year. And here is why this is a big deal. So what's pretty much made up the market, as you notice with the first two, is tech. Um, you know, the market over the past decade, the stock market was mostly driven by large cap growth stocks and technology. Uh, SCHD isn't exactly that. It's more of a lower volatility value ETF. So if you don't like the big swings, this may be for you. So in recent times, those low volatility value ETFs haven't exactly been in favor, and yet somehow SCHD manages to target these stocks and still outperform uh, certain benchmarks like the S&P 500. Uh, so the good news is that SCHD still has a low expense ratio at 0.06%. It's not as, as not as low as the first two, but it also has one-year returns of 45.52% and five-year returns of 15.53, uh, with huge dividend yield at roughly 3%. Um, which is excellent considering the overall performance of this ETF. So for retirees, SCHD will serve excellently as your portfolio's conservative equity position because it has historically grown in value and also provided dividend income at the same time. Uh, it can also be used to balance out the volatility from other aspects of your portfolios, whether you're YOLOing your chicken tendies that your mom made you in, your ba in her basement. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, I'm not going down that road, um, without having to sacrifice your returns. So in conclusion, SCHD is great all around, uh, and it can fill a variety of investor needs. Okay, so number four is the Invesco QQQ ETF. Uh, just recently, they did release the QQQM with lower expense ratios, which you may want to check out. So this ETF has delivered over the past 10 years with massive returns. So with QQQ, you get an ETF that tracks a modified market cap weighted index of the top 100 NASDAQ stocks. Um, so it's a weighted index, which you can look up on your own. I won't get into that right here. Um, but this ETF is mostly made up of 63% tech companies and 21% consumer cyclical companies. So big star right there, 63% tech. There are no financial companies uh, in this ETF. The expense ratio is a little bit higher compared to the first uh, ETFs that we talked about, um, but it still comes in somewhat relatively low at 0.2% which is still less than a financial advisor. So this fund owns almost all valuable stocks on the NASDAQ, so obviously QQQ is heavily dominated by the tech sector, and as you know, most tech giants still trade on NASDAQ. Um, this ETF's top 10 holdings are all tech, with Apple being the biggest at 11.1%, and Microsoft coming in at second at 10%. So QQQ has a dividend yield of 0.46%, which is the lowest out of this list so far. Um, but this is to be expected because typically tech growth companies reinvest their earnings back into the company for research and development, uh, R&D, marketing, and other efforts to grow the company as fast as possible. So QQQ has a one-year return of 43.26% and a 10-year return, much higher than everything else I've mentioned here, at 21.43%. 
So the conclusion here is when it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it may take years to recover as we saw in the dot-com bubble of the early 2000s. Number five is the SPY ETF. SPY is the best recognized and oldest US listed ETF and typically tops rankings for largest assets under management and greatest trading volume. This is one of the most popular ETFs that traders get in and out of daily, especially with um, options, which I'll get into at the end of this section. Uh, so just like VOO, this ETF tracks the massively popular US index S&P 500. So again, we're talking about the Microsofts of the world, the Apples, the Alphabets, um, all the tech giants, Disney, Walmart, Tesla, whatever. So SPY has got eyes on everything. That was my dad joke of the video. Terrible, just lost half my subscribers. Um, so SPY is incredibly diverse in that it spreads your investments across 11 sectors. Plus, it gives greater weight to sectors with the most valuable stocks, which is why it is not surprising that tech dominates SPY. Uh, the sector makes up a third of the entire SPY stock and is actually followed by consumer cyclicals, which takes up another 15%. So SPY has a one-year return of 38.69% and has a 10-year return of 15.18%. Uh, it also has a dividend yield of roughly 1.2% um, and an expense ratio of 0.09%, which is relatively low. So if you're looking for a vanilla, boring benchmark to track like SPY, um, this would be the answer, um, this or VOO. So for all my followers that are fans of writing options, you can easily sell covered calls against your SPY holdings to earn extra income as it is the most highly traded ETF in the world. So there's a ton of liquidity uh, used for this strategy, but you must own at least 100 or more shares of SPY, uh, which would be over $42,000 in today's dollars at the time of this recording. Okay, and finally, my thoughts are always at the end of the video. Uh, basically, this one's gonna be short and sweet. So with stuff like this, with these ETFs that are super diversified, super cheap, uh, provide a ton of liquidity, uh, some some uh, brokerages you can borrow against these. So say, for example, you have 100 grand in uh, VTI, for example, you can borrow a certain percentage at a very low interest rate against your own portfolio. So with this being said, I would dollar cost average, meaning you're buying at the highs, the lows, the mids, you know, the valleys, the peaks, whatever. Um, that way you're always getting the best price possible over the long term. Uh, and then finally, um, invest for the long term. So again, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this is typically for years, if not decades of um, time horizons. So you need to hold on to these as long as possible to reap the benefits. But you don't want to base this on history, which is kind of where this comment is coming from. Uh, but typically, all these things, as you can see, have averaged about 15 to 20% over the last 10 years. Yes, this was during unprecedented money printing. Yes, this was during uh, stimulus. Yes, this was during quantitative easing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight million. Um, if you don't know what that means, Google it. But, um, you know, if I was investing in an equity position, uh, VTI and a couple of these other ones would definitely be it. So as always, I hope you got value from this video. Please share this video to someone who's new to ETFs. Uh, as always, hit the like button, hit subscribe and hit the bell. Um, and thank you for watching and have a prosperous day. Appreciate it. Dude, there's a freaking fruit fly flying around this whole video. I'm sitting there laser focused, dude. I feel like Tiger in Augusta. Like I'm sitting there with the nerves of steel, trying to give the presentation. I got this little thing flying around. Give me a break, dude. Give me a break. <laughs>